Okay, we're going to continue with the choroid or posterior uvea in the cat, uh, just with a quick pointing out that uh, cat globes like to wrinkle like this during processing for whatever reason. That's sort of characteristic. Um, and you can see even from low mag that the cat irritocorneal angle is a little bit more uh, open. The ciliary cleft is a little bit more obvious. Um, maybe a reason why cats seem to be less prone to glaucoma in general than dogs. Um, but there could be a lot of factors for that. We just wanted you to, to recognize it at low magnification. We can also make out the tapetum of the cat at low magnification, um, and we'll start there to continue with the choroid. So remember from lecture that uh, the tapetum is the reflective part of the choroid uh, that is the reason that our domestic species, dogs, cats, ruminants, horses, have such a bright reflective uh, appearance when you shine a light in their eye. Uh, despite this eye being upside down in the scanned image, this is the upper portion uh, of the globe, and we can we know that because of the pr presence of the tapetum. Um, notice that exterior to that, you have a variably thick layer of regular pigmented choroid, same structures as in the anterior uvea, melanocytes, non-pigmented stromal cells, lots of blood vessels, um, and then we can kind of make out, we'll zoom up one more, uh, we can see this blood vessel heading up to the very inner surface of the choroid and making this little capillary layer. This is the choriocapillaris. This is the vascular excuse me, supply that's just outward of the RPE here, retinal pigment epithelium. This capillary network supplies the outer retina. So that is the reason that when you get a retinal detachment, the outer retina... Uh, loses its nourishment and begins to atrophy, starting with the photoreceptor segments, the rods and cones here, eventually progressing through the photoreceptor nuclei, which we'll talk about when we get to the retina. Um, that's pretty much it, I think, for the choroid, so I'll take this opportunity in the cat um, to show you some of the differences in their iris structure. Um, we talked a little bit about the different uh, pigment that they have in their uh, in their iris. Um, so you can see that the melanocytes uh, are a little bit more of a golden orange hue. Um, and then if you look over here, you can tell that the, the melanosomes or the packets of pigment intracellularly are more elongated uh, or lancet shaped as compared to the round and darker staining uh, melanosomes, you don't need to know the word melanosomes, but that's what they're called, um, of uh, the canine uveal tract and in all species in the uh, iris pigment epithelium. So this is a characteristic feature of the cat, whether it's a lion, tiger, or a little tabby cat. Um, and I think with that we will make this a short one of uh, posterior uvea, uh, but I suppose we should show you guys the dog tapetum. You can see that it is still an obvious uh, inner choroidal structure, but in the dog it's a little bit more wispy. Still lots of cells, different than the horse tapetum, uh, which is covered in the lecture notes that have been updated. Uh, but there's still a, still a reflective surface. You can still make out the choreal capillaris here and the retinal pigment epithelium sitting inward of it. Um, and you can see these blood vessels that are coursing inward uh, to communicate with the choriocapillaris. So we'll stop this one for now, um, and then we will um, I'll go over a few of the pigmented or uveal modifications to the bird in the next video before finishing with uh, the neural tunic uh, and the lens.